On March 10, 2016, an ROC container ship, the TS Taipei, suffers engine failure and runs aground in coastal waters off Shimen. The hull ruptures and starts to take in water and oil spills. The National Rescue Command Center dispatches helicopters and all 21 crew members are rescued. The TS Taipei is carrying 392 containers, 9 holding hazardous substances, and 505 tons of fuel and oil. The sensitive environment is known for its fishing and tourism. There are also two nuclear power plants nearby, making the situation critical. The government immediately launches an interagency response mechanism. As an onboard assessment is required to decide the next steps, NASC helicopters are deployed to help experts board the ship for inspection. Unfortunately, due to the weather and mechanical problems, a helicopter crashes, and the National Airborne Service Corps and Coast Guard Administration lose two heroes in the line of duty. An aerial inspection reveals a 20-centimeter wide structural breach on the starboard side, meaning that the ship cannot be towed. A large amount of oil is escaping, so extraction work has to begin immediately. On day two, the response center asks experts to use radar to monitor oil on the water's surface and simulate its possible spread. It also asks the ship owner to set up a specialist shoreline cleanup team. First, debris on the shore is removed, then sorbents are used to remove oil from the intertidal zone and oil on the rocks is wiped off. On day seven, the sea calms. The response center immediately sends the oil extraction team to board the ship. After extracting 276 tons of oil, on day 14, the extraction team is forced to evacuate due to a strong northeast monsoon. Some 229 tons of oil remains on board. On day 15, the hull is ripped apart by the waves. The 30-ton hatch covers fall off, cracking an emptied fuel tanks and spilling lots of oil. Choppy seas make condition perilous. The rear section of the ship lists 25 degrees to starboard, and the risk of capsize becomes critical. After the hull rips apart, the response team first removes the fallen containers for navigation safety. The response team also starts removing containers of hazardous substances. First, an automatic locator beacon is installed. Then experts board the ship to confirm it is safe, and eight containers are removed. Next, the response team removes heavy containers on the front deck then daringly remove empty ones on the listing back deck. Finally, the cargo bay is opened and 190 non-submerged containers are gradually removed. With the hull broken apart and a sea coming, the team immediately restarts oil extraction. As goods from damaged containers have entered the fuel tanks, no oil can be extracted before the debris is removed.
On day 30, the team starts work to remove oil and oily debris from the cargo hold. The tangled debris must be cut away bit by bit and removed, and oil ladled out. High-pressure water jets clean the walls, and sorbent patches and ropes absorb the oil. After oil contaminates the shore, the team asks local residents and fishermen to help with the cleanup. First, thick oil is removed. Then, depending on the terrain, different types of cleaning methods are used to absorb the rest. After, experts from home and abroad conduct a preliminary inspection. At the moment, so there is no more liquid oil. And there has been a lot of effort put into um, cleaning uh, that area. Through joint inspections to confirm oil from the hole and shoreline is gone, on day 63, the executive Yuan declares that the EPA-led response is complete. In total, the response team removed 203 containers, 366 cubic meters of oil, had people put in 11,937 cleaning sessions, and cleared away 186.3 tons of oily debris and water contaminated with 66.3 cubic meters of oil. The remaining 187 containers submerged in a hole, two missing containers, and 36.1 cubic meters of oil sealed below the waterline are handed over to the Marine Port Bureau for the ship salvage phase. However, another strong northeast monsoon hits, increasing the list of the ship's rear and the risk of capsize. The response team quickly installs a whole monitoring system. For the ship salvage phase, the response team adopts a refloating technique with these main steps. First, remove submerged containers in a cargo holds. Next, cut and take away the living quarters and engine. Then, refloat and remove the rear and front hull sections. First, the team begins removing the submerged containers. The damaged container track is repaired and 187 containers hoisted out one by one with holes drilled to drain the water. Immediately after, the team cuts away the 650-ton living quarters with welding torches and chainsaws. Next, the team cuts away the 450-ton engine and prevents spillage, with engineers working underwater in a narrow space contaminated with oil. But another serious problem arises. Powerful Typhoon Nepardak approaches as the Premier visits to inspect the site. Fortunately, the typhoon tracks south and northern Taiwan is unaffected. When we're floating and towing the rear section, it takes in lots of water and gets jammed on rocks, and cables snap. Although we're floating is still successful, strong currents take it to the east. The team manages to regain control and tow it to the deck barge. With regard to this operation, this is the first time refloating to a deck barge has been tried in Taiwan. Because the ship bottom is severely damaged, a floating crane is urgently needed to support the hull. Fortunately, the wreck can be secured to the barge and towed to Jilong Harbor. The front section is still watertight and is refloated and towed to a dock in Jilong Harbor. This is the first time in Jilong Harbor's 130-year history that it has received half a ship. 
With the front section of the TS Taipei being towed to a dock in Jilong Harbor, the response effort is coming to an end. On August 15, 2016, 158 days after the grounding of the TS Taipei, the Marine Port Bureau convenes a final response meeting. It announces that the ship has been salvaged and the response center's mission is complete. From bitterly cold March to scorching August, over 159 days, the response center convened 19 meetings and mobilized around 1,000 local residents, fishermen, marine engineers and experts for the TS Taipei response. The team removed all the oil, cleaned up the shore and salvaged the wreck. The coastal area at Shimen has regained its vitality and beauty. That's how legends 